In this video, we are going to be dealing with adding and subtracting rational expressions. It is um, the third video in a series of um, videos on rational expressions on my channel if you'd be interested in checking out the first two. Um, the first thing to remember when dealing with um, rational expressions and you're trying to add and subtract them is that you um, have to have like denominators. All right, Adding and subtracting rational expressions requires like denominators. Um, it's identical to adding two fractions, um, plain ordinary fractions, like one-half plus three-fourths. All right, you would have to get common denominators before you um, attempted to add or subtract them. All right, in this first example, I have done a subtraction, all right, mainly because I want to make sure and uh, point out the fact that I am subtracting this entire fraction right here, and there is a binomial on the top. So when you subtract a binomial or any type of um, polynomial, you've got to make sure and distribute that negative sign right there, go through and change all of the signs in other words. Okay, so that's why this uh, example in specific I chose. All right, um, subtracting does go through and change all the signs. If you want to see algebraically why, all right, plus minus one really uh, is there and you would be distributing that negative one, which would then go through and change each of the signs right there. Um, in this first example, as you can see, I already have common denominators, so I did want to start out with a relatively simple one in that aspect. All right, so if since I've already got common denominators there, um, I will have one fraction when I get done with a denominator of x minus 2. Okay, now what I'm going to do for that numerator is I'm going to take everything and just add it. I'm going to have the 4x minus 10 right there. And then going through, because I am subtracting, I'm going to switch all the signs. That becomes a minus x, and then that becomes a plus 4. And I'm going to put it all over x minus 2. Okay, then I'm going to go through and I'm going to want to um, combine like terms. All right, so I see a 4x right there, and then keeping in mind that negative in front there really makes a little negative 1x there. I'm going to be putting those two things together. That's going to give me a 3x. All right, and then I can put those two constants together again, making sure you pay attention to the sign in front. That's a minus 10, all right, plus negative. It's going to be a negative 10 added to that 4. That's going to give me a minus 6 and then all over the x minus 2. All right, now once you do something like that, you can't just assume that you are done at this point. Check out both the numerator and the denominator and make sure that you can't factor something else out. Okay, in this uh, numerator right here, I can factor out a 3, which would give me a 3 times the quantity of an x minus 2. All right, I do have that binomial, same binomial on the bottom of x minus 2. All right, so then that allows that to cross out. And I have then just a final answer of 3. All right, so a real uh, straightforward example of dealing with rational expressions when you already have common denominators. Okay, now let's go to one where you do not have common denominators. Okay, this one right here, I'm going to have a 3 over x plus 4, and I'm adding to that 6 over x plus 5. Okay, so a relatively simple one, all right. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what that um, least common denominator needs to be. All right, I'm going to arrive at that by just taking the two denominators and multiplying them together. So I've got an x plus 4, and an x plus 5 is my least common denominator. All right, so if you recall regular fractions, I would need to multiply this fraction by uh, whatever um, I'm missing in my least common denominator, and same thing with this one. All right, I've got the x plus 4. I've got that part of my least common denominator, so this fraction is missing the x plus 5. So I'm going to multiply by a form of 1 and alter this fraction. The second one, all right, x plus 5, x plus 5, I've got that part. I don't have the x plus 4, so I'll multiply by a form of 1. All right, now to keep the problem from getting uh, too cluttered up, I think I'm going to rewrite again before I show that step. That'll give me plenty of room on both sides. All right, now when I uh, do this, I do want to do it with a form of 1 so that I don't alter the equation. This one needs to be multiplied by an x plus 4 over an x plus 4. All right, this fraction needs to be multiplied by the x plus 5. So x plus 5 over 
x plus 5. All right, and I am putting parentheses around there because we want to make sure and realize that that is a binomial. All right, in this numerator, I've got to now, you know, simplify this fraction. I've got to realize that's a binomial and it's being multiplied by 6, so that 6 needs to be distributed to both of those terms. All right, the exact same thing is going on in this one. That x plus 5 there in that numerator is a binomial, so I'm going to want to distribute the 3 to both of those things. All right, so when I multiply this out, I'm going to work on my numerator first. I'm going to have a 3x plus 15. All right, and then I can just go ahead and plus because I am adding these. Now I'm going to work on this one. I'll have a 6x plus 24. All right, because I now have common denominators, I can write the entire fraction over just a single denominator, x plus 4, x plus 4. Five. All right, at this point, I am then going to want to go through and combine some like terms. All right, so I've got like terms on the 3x and the 6x. That's going to give me a 9x. All right, going through and adding the constants. I've got a 15 there and a 24 there. When I add that, I'm going to get a 39. All right, and again, I am going to keep that same denominator, x plus 4 x plus 5. Okay, now that is um, an answer right there. All right, you will, this one is not going to turn out and make a difference. All right, however, you might want to, like on that top, I could factor out a greatest common factor. Looks like I can take 3 out of that. All right, and this one is not going to make any difference because nothing's going to cross out, however it could. So let's go ahead and show it as if it would help. All right, if I take out a greatest common factor of a 3 right there, I'm going to have a 3x left plus a 13. All right, and then my denominator stays the same, x plus 4, x plus 5. All right, now, not needed, all right, unless you need your answer in completely factored form, all right, but I definitely want to check it out because this binomial might have crossed out with one of those two binomials down there at the bottom. Uh, this one, obviously, it did not, however, it could have, so you might want to always check that out. Okay, so two equivalent answers for this one. All right, so a couple of examples of going through rational expressions on adding and subtracting. All right, if you like the video, go ahead and hit like for me. And if you um, like my style of explanations, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.